Among his compositions within the structure of the Indian Raga are some of the most beautiful pieces that will outlive this century and many to follow. To name a few, Chandranandan, Madhumalti, Gauri Manjari, and Alamgiri. The last raga he composed as a tribute to his father, who was also known as Alamgir. And among the great renditions that the Ustad had delivered for his countless fans, we can name a few. Shri, Darbari, Ahir Bhairav, Yaman, Durgeshwari, Bhairavi, and of course, his ever so popular Hem Behag and Zila Kafi. Well, Khan Sahib had, you know, he composed so many different ragas, and all the ragas, whatever he created was great. But out of all these things, all those ragas, Chandranandan was one of the highlighted ragas. But it was very funny, there was a story behind it, how Chandranandan came into the picture. At that time, it was recorded in Bombay. The first album was three minutes to record. So the producer came to him, HMB producer, and said that, Khan Sahib, just play something new. So Khan Sahib said, something new? What do you mean something new? Well, yes, something new which is not, uh, you know, general ragas, something abnormal, something. Khan Sahib said, okay. And I heard this story from Nikhil Banerjee, because Nikhil Banerjee was playing Kanpura in that recording. So Khansa played, three minutes was over, and that, when that came, and then the, the producer said, what will be the name of the ragas? Khansa said, oh boy, uh, I need some time to think about it. Okay, three days, after three days, then he said, well, that night, was full moon. So that's how the name came as Chandranandan. And then when when Chandranandan came into the market, it was hot cake. So wherever Khansa used to go, everybody was shouting, Khansa play Chandranandan. But he forgot what he did. So Khansa had to buy his own record from the store and listen to Chandranandan and figure it out what is it. He studied. <laughs> then he started playing Chandranandan outside. Thus spoke Yehudi Menuhin on Ali Akbar Khan, an absolute genius, the greatest musician in the world. And many have considered him India's Johann Sebastian Bach. that when Ali Akbar Khan first received the title Ustad at a relatively young age, his father merely laughed. But later, when the patriarch was 100 years old, he told his son that he was very proud of him. I'm so pleased with your work in music that I'll do something which is very rare. As your guru and father, I'm giving you a title, Swara Samrat the Emperor of Melody. Sometimes people ask me, how should we prepare ourselves to hear this music? I, I always say, don't prepare anything, just come and relax. The music will tell you what to do. <laughs> Ustad Alauddin Khan spent a certain period of time at Shantiniketan as guru of the music students there. The poet Robindranath Tagore had a deep respect for his unrivaled teacher and guardian of musical knowledge. In the 90s, his son, Ustad Ali Akbar, stayed at Shantiniketan as visiting professor and taught the students. Ironically, 
What brought him there was an endowment in the name of his great disciple, Nikhil Bandhupadhyay. In the morning, he would teach, and in the evening, he played. He drew a deep breath of satisfaction at being able to return to Gurudev Rabindranath's abode of peace. The day is no more. The shadow is upon the earth. It is time that I go to the stream to fill my pitcher. The evening air is eager with the sad music of the water. Ah, it calls me out into the dusk. In the lonely lane, there is no passerby. The wind is up. The ripples are rampant in the river. I know not if I shall come back home. I know not whom I shall chance to meet. There at the fording in the little boat, the unknown man plays upon his lute. The residents of the Ustad at Maihar now wear an empty, vacant look. The Ustad's urge to return to his Vrindavan could not materialize. On 18th June 2009, he breathed his last in San Rafael. But his music continues to bring his soul, his heart, his dreams back to where it all started from, his very own Vrindavan. Delineating a raga is like making a painting with the colors of melody on the canvas of the heart. When I play, for instance, a raga like Vrindavani Sarang, am I not transported spiritually to the Vrindavan of Radha and Krishna? I am not only playing a few notes then, I am also playing with the colors of the spectrum. The colors that gradually mix and remix into millions and millions of hues. And all those colors paint in my mind and heart an image probably like this. <laughs> <laughs> 